another game. And here we are with the second game that is going to be played between Czech Republic B and Australia C. And it's going to be, yep, exactly. It's going to be a land nomad. You can see a lot of villages all across the map. So let's just switch off the fog of war so that we see everybody and everything to help us in discerning what's going to happen. Well, land nomad, especially the variants of the maps for Nations Cup, are pretty much fair as fair as possible. And so there's not really any kind of problem with them. You could have seen potentially in RTS League even the migration version, which was quite interesting. It spawned a whole lot more equal than the normal one, but it has to be said that the normal maps, even though they might be spawning funny, it makes for a lot more strategic of our hands, because of course you need to be ready for anything the map throws at you, and that selects the better players a whole lot better than when you are having basically everything safe, and you know that your opponent is going to be having everything the same as well. So yep, even though it's fair, it might be a bit taken, from what Age of Empires is, and Age of Empires is definitely based on a whole lot of randomness along the way. And even though we might be thinking that randomness is not such a good idea in a game like this, especially in a competitive setting, it's not really all that true, because of course it is made with proper design in thought, and that means that it kind of evens up and really, if you do the correct strategical decisions, you should be prevailing even against the, well, Perceived odds, because they are just perceived and they are not really that real if you play correctly. But yeah, let's go back to the game at our hands as we are looking at the villages and of course sheep sending scout information back home somehow as well, probably telepathic telepathically, because I don't expect that anybody could be talking cheap in here. But well, definitely interesting positioning right now of Chris Deco. He is in the pocket or not? No, he isn't. He is actually on the flank. And that's actually making this quite interesting indeed. Uh, because of course it means that it will open basically even the red to Radian. And even though he's supposed to be Pocket Dracon T, he is not that much. He is not that much. And if Noodlebox is in any kind of, well, belligerent mood, which he definitely will be quite probably, he might be quite ready to actually go into the Pocket right off and not really annoy himself or rather bother himself with Chris Deco. Definitely will be curious, but yeah, we are also seeing that the things in here are just a bit turn around. As Noodlebox is not on the right, he's going to be on the left fighting against Chris Doko. Whereas Bulbasaur rocks with Yarosa, who are also spawning on the right, are going to be having a bit of fun with Scarecrow, who is actually a new player in this game. And Buck E is also something I don't recognize. So, yep, CZ are sticking with the same, whereas the opponents Australia are letting a bit more players enjoy the atmosphere of Nations Cup 2017, so that's nice to see as well. Let's analyze the starting positions in here. We are starting, for example, with Chirpas, who was the best player from Australia C in the last game on the Arabia, and right now he is having double board, stone, and does he have some kind of good gold? No, but he has a lot of hunt, literally a ton of it. Where is his gold? On the right, times two. Yeah, it could be fine together with Scarecrow, or rather Becky E. Bucky E. Another double, triple, four, quadruple gold on top of that. With some extra stone mine, that's nice. And Dracon T actually placed it on step quite late. Just now at six minutes? Yeah, well, he's going to be very slow. He's going to be very slow, and this is basically confirming that he's... I don't know. I'm not exactly sure if he's going to be really that happy, because already he's having three villages. Scarecrow is at 3 as well, but he has just finished a bit earlier than Dracon T. So those two players are going to be quite far behind. As Noodlebox, as the Chinese, is even 7, so they start with best, or rather with more villages, so okay. And quite interestingly, CZ, Czech Republic haven't chosen any Chinese. I mean, why? Chinese are one of the strongest civilizations on, on nomads, especially because of the three extra villages. It just helps you so immensely. And you could have seen in RTS League from the Jedi Z that basically it really pays off quite significantly, especially in skilled hands, which is probably not something all that much in this game, even though the players are not bad, they know what they're doing, definitely. But yeah, they're not like 2K experts with them. And that probably makes a difference. And if you are not used to that and to the map overall, it's definitely possible that the civilization is not going to be as useful to you as it otherwise might have been. As of course it uh, requires a bit of different gameplay for them. But yeah, let's see about that. In the meantime, we are moving, for example, for blue, 
who is having Bors right next to his home base with stone as well. One gold, not really anything on that gate, but few goals in here, but unfortunately they are not really his. They could be considered between him and Noodlebox, who is having gold right next to his town center. Also a pretty decent hand, so this is a pretty sweet spot for Noodlebox. And for Dragon T, well he's having berries, times two, it's pretty decent hand. Uh, with some stones and there is a bit of gold, but it's definitely quite in the front. So I don't really like the spawning of CZ or spawning. It's not really spawning because you are choosing where you are going to be placed with your base. So, well, CZ will probably have to play quite better than their opponents if they want to somehow emerge from this game victorious because the starting position don't really, or rather starting positions don't really look all that great for them, especially on the left flank. On the right flank, it's not that bad. We are looking at Bulbasaur right now, double gold right next to his town center, triple gold, and but does he have some food? Well, that's that's a lot of gold for him. <laughs> Five gold mines with a relic on top of that. He's having a bit of sheep and berries, but otherwise our hunt is pretty far away. He'll probably want to mill that. Not new box, Bulbasaur. Yeah, he definitely will want to mill that once he has enough wood. It should be pretty soon. Indeed, yeah, it's going to be just a question of time. And moving on to another player, which is going to be Yarosa. Yet again, Stone. That seems to be basically something that a lot of the players in this game are aiming for. Aiming for pretty decent amount of hunt yet again. But where is his gold? On the back, that's not bad. In the front, yet another big one. But he's probably going to be fighting for that with Scarecrow. A lot of gold mine, gold mines, and stone mines between them. And that's slightly unfortunate for Scarecrow, especially with the stone, because he does have gold at the back, which seems to be alrightish for him. And Orange, of course, having a lot of gold, literally a ton of gold, not only in the front, but also at the back, if he needs to fall back into something a bit more secure. So, yep, it seems like that this is a pretty nice, pretty nice positioning for Australians. Definitely, you can tell from this that they are prepared for the map, they have played it, and they know how to place their town centers a bit better than CZ's. Now, well, let's see if they can come back into this match, because this is the best of three match and they are losing 1-0, which means that if this game is also lost by them, they are going to be out of the tournament, which would be a bit of a shame, but of course, somebody has to, somebody has to exit in every round. It's just how competitions go, you cannot, not rather, not everyone can win. So, moving on with Bulbasaur, yeah, it's going to be a bit of walling, maybe. Where are you actually going? I don't see any kind of yellow foundations. So, not sure where he's actually going. If they're maybe going to be attempting to triple on the left, that would be kind of weird. But Raconti is definitely in absolutely horrible position right about now. I'm definitely curious about this really. I'm going to be following him. Not exactly sure what's going to happen. It's just a sheep on the left, or rather on the right. And it really seems like that he will really be. Hmm? It's still looking like that they might be actually attempting some kind of triple on the left. Definitely curious. Probably going to be some kind of drush. He's Spanish. It could kind of make sense because Spanish usually want to go into faster castle. He's coming for a house. That's for both scouting purposes and because he needs to do something. And this villager is the best, so he needs to build a house somewhere. Why not there? <laughs> of course, it's not going to be safe all that much, but yeah, well, who cares? On this map, as few ladies, is going to be first from Chris Deco at 21 villages. Interesting. And well, he's already going to be walled off because Noodlebox is realizing that he needs to wall as fast as possible. And Chris Deco is already working on that as well. In the meantime, villager finish with the house in the middle, going somewhere a bit more to the middle. So, what's going to be the idea in there? Not sure, but Brex are dropped from Chirpas. And is he actually going to be drushing? Well, right now coming for Feudal Age, so not exactly that sure. Chirpas, Chirpas, where are you? So far nothing coming up. So probably just going to be Archers in the Feudal Age, would be expecting. With the advanced Bulbasaur also coming up with houses for a bit of scouting. Noodle box and Chirpas, well, everybody coming into Feudal Ages, but Scarecrow. <laughs> Investing into Palisades big time. Seriously big time, and oh well. Even has to actually forego this white boar and the sheep. That's definitely not ideal. Not ideal at all. And well, hmm, not really seen anything all that significant in here. So definitely could be going a bit better. 
for him, the economy and overall gameplay and build up. So barracks come in for both players, for Chris Duko is already actually blacksmith. So he's probably aiming for a fast castle. As the pressure for town centers and booming. Yeah, I can, I, I can understand that. I definitely can understand that, especially with Noodlebox advancing so late. Noodlebox is Chinese. Well, not sure what he's going to be coming for. We'll probably see right about now. But so far he's coming for a wall in, which is going to be continued, of course, by Chris Duko as well. And, well, he will want to finish this palisade, but of course it's already quite high on the hit points. So not really any kind of significant problem for him. Apparently stable for the Chinese. So either he's going to be advancing for knights and camels. Well, he seems to be aiming there, so I wouldn't be surprised at all. Blacksmith coming up, so yep, that probably is going to be something like that. Maybe a few scout cavalry guys for a bit of raiding, but I'm not really sure. Because he's walled himself off. So he knows he's not going to be attempting anything like that. And yep, we are still seeing continued, continued scouting with the houses by the Spanish player Bulbasaur. Right now, Rabin right next to right next to gold mining of Sherp. And that's pretty much it for him. But Sherpa's already coming for the arches. And well, it's going to be few leech aggression from him. I was maybe thinking that advancing into the castle leech and going for the plumes right off would be slightly better. But apparently he doesn't think so. So he's hoping that this is going to be working quite all right for him, and it really might. Because of course, uh, the yellow player is so far not really ready for anything at all. He's not even advancing into the next H yet. Even though he's going to be clicking... Or is he? In about a minute. Not sure, not sure. Few Lage for Dracon and Buck E. And also for Scarecrow. With apparently the Turks coming for... Which is very interesting civilization for Let Nomad. <laughs> You usually don't want to go for them, at least from what I remember of past and nomads. And he's going to be attempting to go for fast castle because of course in Castle Age that's where he's thrown. Uh, with the Anisaris and such with Watchtower coming up already against the archers. And well, right now CZ recognizing that actually they might be in for a bit of problems. Or already losing two villages, this is going to be that villager as well. And this is pretty sucky. For multiple reasons, because even though Bulbasaur might be attempting to go into the castle, he didn't even have Loom, apparently. Right now coming for the upgrade. He wants to have enough stone. He needs to have enough stone for the castle in Conquistaros. This is absolute disaster for him. Absolute disaster for him. And is he having some backup stone? Ah yeah, well, at the very back. Times two, but he probably doesn't know about it. Hmm. Yeah, he hasn't scouted anything in there. So his next stone that he sees about, he knows about, is this one very far away and not really safe at all so he's really in for a very tough game hmm. even though the castle is going to be coming up he's probably going to be having to do with like skirmishes or something so yeah bad bad game for him coming up in the meantime Yaros are also coming castle age basically everybody coming castle age but Shirpas. yeah six castle ages Chris Deco already in so what's going to be the game plan. What's going to be the game plan from you? Extra town centers first, as he's going to be attempting to develop the economy as pression. Of course, makes a lot of sense. And in the meantime, purple not going for anything at all, just having double stables. And he's probably going to be attempting a bit of castle raiding with knights. That's usually what you do. And what's quite effective. And yeah, it might be just enough. It might be just enough. But let's return to actually the action in the middle for Bulbasaur. Well, I'm fairly certain they didn't really expect that kind of action, but it seems to be quite alright with the two towers right now. But of course, it's not really ideal, because what it means for him is uh, that his castle age is going to be really kind of useless. He doesn't have any kind of stone at all. This stone is not going to be safe for him also, and of course, without any kind of significant amount of resources he cannot defend, he's probably going to be forced into... I'm thinking right now. At this stage, it would be best for him to switch into stables and into knights. Either that, or into at least skirmishes, but I'm thinking the knights would be slightly better. He does have at least some kind of gold, he can get the gold right next to the town center, so that's okay. Second town center coming up, and well, the knights, they would be just quite nicely countering the archers. Because you couldn't expect a castle age from Cherpas anytime soon. And well, it would be working just fine for him. He would be clean easy. 
few late targets and of course it will be allowing him to develop his economy from there on. So yep, this is though nicely played by Chirpas. Really nicely played indeed, but Castle is already, already dropped right now by Yarosa and the Yanisaris are going to be coming up for a bit of fun and of course there are already villages right next to here working on actually making a hole in the walls and of course even though Mongol is preparing with what? Probably knights. Alright, yes it's going to be knights from him, well let's see if it's going to be enough because of course Yanisaris are pretty strong and they are able to deal even, even with knights so it might be just enough for them to get through the wall into the gold miners and also kill a few knights along the way. In the meantime though still pretty big troubles right now for Bulbasaur. Still wasn't able to somehow stabilize and what's his unit of choice then? So far literally nothing, which I don't really understand all that much why he isn't preparing for anything. Weird. But in the meantime, Dracon T is so far not ready for anything either. And of course, as we could have seen a bit earlier, Noodlebox was getting ready for Dragon with the Knights and he's already in to be as much annoying as for his opponent as possible. And he's getting on his goal on the wood line on the left. And well, even though Town Setters are all across the place for Chris Deco, of course, this Raiden is going to be a bit problematic because he isn't ready for that either. He does have at least the Monastery because of the Relic apparently. But yeah. He will need a few more monks for himself, case the call, let's switch. Yeah, just now making rather letting those guys out and bit of bit of micro, he's still in two nights and this is exactly what he needs to do. And okay, the days of raiding of noodle box are probably going to be over because I'm fully expecting that this is going to be just enough. Just enough, those few monks to steal the raiders one by one. In the meantime, of course, we are looking at Scarecrow building the walls all across the map. With a bit of raiding already going on with the Yanisaris, which exactly as I said, they are dealing even with the horses. So unfortunately for Green, this is a pretty tough moment for him and he's without gold on the right side. Does he have some extra at the back? Yes, he does. And he's gathering from it without any kind of problem, but still he doesn't have enough, enough support in here going for the market to potentially slink or be slung. Probably just slink, I'm thinking. Because why would you make market otherwise? Not sure really. But yeah, he's right now in pretty deep trouble and he will need assistance from his pocket player Bucky pretty soon who is coming for town centers as a Persian and not really being ready for any kind of fighting just yet. So the only successful military operation is right now for Australia Sea from Chirpas. But apparently there's going to be a bit of help from Red. Well so far not, another town center. With Siege Workshop, with Mangonels being the counter weapon to all the archers. Not a bad idea. And that is... Oh! <laughs> Actually very funny back build right now by Draconti. Right in between. Even stealing the gold or other stone. Right in between Chirpas and Noodlebox. And since Noodlebox's attempt in the front has basically failed. Because of the conversions by Blue, by Chris the Call. This is really looking quite tough for him. He's going to be losing the town centers quite significantly and easily. And even through the very bad start, the Dragon T was having, dropping the TC like the very last player. So his economy wasn't really all that all that good. He's right now back at 45. And well, his teammates 53, 40, 70, whereas the opponents 34, 67, 31, and 43. So yep, the economies are better for CZs. And of course, the town center is gonna go gonna go away quite soon and with all the conversions and all the mangonels fairly certain that noodlebox is going to be deleted from the game just about now yep noodlebox at 33 villages conversions coming up with absolutely nice favor killing everything and stealing everything and over oh well oh well with the support of the knight stolen from noodlebox <laughs> you can fully expect that he's going to be losing absolutely everything which is absolutely horrible of course for australia see and a lot of conversions should be coming up, but unfortunately they aren't. And they might be allowing a few villages to escape. Which might still allow him to actually rebel, rebuild himself. Going to be stealing villages from his opponent. Yes. Steal and release quite nicely indeed. And it's going to be up to the knights to get rid of the remaining villages retreating right now. But it seems like that he's not going to be all that successful. In the meantime, of course, we are looking at Chirpas. Attempting to build a castle in Bulbasaur's base. Just, just not finishing. 
900 hit points left. Well, that was definitely close, as he's in the castle, of course, because of the crossbowman and dropping the castle on top of his opponent. So that was quite clutch from Bulbasaur, but it seems to be quite alright, as the Yanisaris are moving from the green player also to have a bit of fun in the pocket on Bucky, but Bucky is already preparing with the knights. And, oh, not nice, just scout cavalry, and that's definitely not enough against the Yanisaris. Definitely not enough at all. But yeah, a lot of guys coming up, coming up with Mongols still having at least a few knights in here. But the Yanisaris are going to be just a bit too strong for that. And of course they are going to be killing as many villages as they can come upon. And does he actually know about the TC at the top? No he doesn't, oh man. But right now he's coming there. Closer, but not close enough. Oh, he doesn't know there's another TC with extra gold and extra farms and everything. That's just a bit of a shame right now for him, not really enough scouting. He should be really expecting something like that, that this is not everything and that Scarecrow is having, but yeah, apparently that's not going to be really the case. In the meantime, of course, Yellow is still <laughs> trying to prevent the castle. He's right now trying to take it down, basically waste 650 stone for his opponent. And much more importantly, he's trying to basically wall it off. Oh well, bit of a friendly fire in there. What? Ah, yeah, he was actually. Oh well, that 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 was really weird micro by him. He was shooting at those villagers, but he was also shooting at his own. And right now, there is no Manguna, so yeah, this is. Oh well, <laughs> this is not really great micro. This this is actually what might allow the castle to finish. It's not really good at all, but he's already working on it. Right now, he doesn't have any Mangon else. So yep, this pattern ram is gone, and this castle might actually be finished. So this is really nice perseverance by Chirpas. Finishing with the castle exactly as it's needed, and Bulbasaur is not going to be catching any kind of break at all with the siege workshop coming up yet again. And well, even though he does have pretty nice economy at 51, not really anything great, but much better than the opponent. It's not that awesome. And Chirpas is at just 34, but it's working quite a lot better than what Bulbasaur is doing. In the meantime, of course, the base of Purple of Noodlebox has been conquered. Christoko just going to be flagging it by his castle. And, well, of course, Town Center already by Dracon T by the stolen villages right next to the gold. So, yep, even though Purple is rebuilding himself at the very corner of the map with a few villages that he was able to save, but seven of them, not really anything great, we are looking at Dracon T having the villages and Town Center basically behind the base of Grey and he's already raiding and converting also onto the pocket player onto Buggy E so he is advancing really quite sneakily the whole game from the back from the unexpected from the unexpected position onto Australia Sea and with the Yanisaris being absolutely everywhere just now dropping a castle in Green's base trying to convert it into his own the Yanisaris are growing in numbers knights are not any kind of problem to them at all and Imperial Age is coming for Chris Deco all right knights from blue Trying to be defended by the fire from the town centers and of course a few or rather well Mangonel in here that is already destroyed Mangonel in here trying to stop the siege workshop from coming up but probably not going to be succeeding for a long time much longer so this castle is pretty much the only attacking and successful attacking operation by Australia with Cherpas doing what he can to at least kill Bulbasaur and for some kind of help from his teammates, but so far not really needed all that much. And yep, he is basically just now going for a full on defense, uh, Bulbasaur, and trying to keep his opponent busy while his allies deal with the rest of them. Well, this Mangona is definitely annoying. Oh, well, this is going to be actually. Oh, a lot of gold lost. Oh, <laughs> nice shot into the back of those monks, and he's killing them so easily. That's wow. 600 gold right there, just destroyed. Well, nicely played, nicely played there by Bucky E. But can he actually make something happen against all those guys? Because those Yanisaris, well, yet again, they are just a bit too, too bit not, too bit hard not to crack. And look at how Chris Deco is going to be ready with Cavaliers pretty soon, being the only player in Imperial Age. And probably for some time as well, Scarecrow even going for at least skirmishes. Not a bad unit. It's something that could be working against the Yanisaris, but not in those numbers. Not really in those Yan not really in those numbers at all. 
All right, so it's going to be just waiting for the inevitable in here for Orange, unless he advances into Castle Age and into Cavaliers and Paladins pretty soon, which doesn't seem to be happening. Monastery and Stables being set up with Red being ready with extra villagers right behind on the Grey Base. And oh well, <laughs> elephants are already coming up. That's going to be, of course, for Chris Deco as the Persian, and he will want to get rid of Chirpas as much as possible and elevate the pressure on his, on his ally, Bulbasaur, who is the one who is under pressure from him. Well, but it seems like that maybe Bulbasaur is not going to be needing all that much assistance. Gutsy Town Center, but yeah, it's not going to finish all the siege in here. And both rams. And the Mangonel, so that's gonna be quite alright in here, right next to the castle. And well, he's unfortunately shooting at his own own siege. So yeah, the GG's are right now coming up because of course trading from blue is just a bit too much for Chirpas to handle. So that would be crumbling and green is pretty much right now destroyed. Because finally he has been discovered at the top. And on top of that, those Yanisaris are right now just killing everything in Bucky's base. And of course, that is not something that they can handle. Even though Bucky is having a nice economy at 112, it's not enough. It's not enough as the opponents are all at 131, 124, 119 and 83. And well, Noodlebox 13, Scarecrow and Sherpas at 36, 33. So apparently, that's not really going to be enough in there. So GG and Czech Republic B are winning against Australia C2-0 and are advancing into the second round. So... Congratulations and well played. And also, well, not badly played by Australia. They were doing a pretty great job in the second game. Especially I have to pick up Chirpas, who was like really stopping Bulbasaur in full. That was really well played by him. And I would definitely would be curious how the battle would have ended if there was not any kind of assistance from teammates like with this raiding and such. Also, I definitely like how Noodlebox went for at the early raiding, but unfortunately his opponents were already ready for that and it wasn't that much of a surprise and then Turks be my favorite civilization in Age of Empires I definitely enjoyed those Yanisaris Okay, let's check the post game Hmm, Chris Deco has the highest score Well, I definitely like Dracon T's play Th That was so well played as he was sneaking behind the opponent lines and then going for the attack from there that was really nice. That was really nice indeed. Not otherwise you're probably not going to be seeing anything all that significantly interesting. Bucky, nice boom, but unfortunately it just wasn't what would win him the game and his team overall. Okay then, GG. All right.